Right then guys, here I am for the summary of the 10 Austrian Grand Prix I ran during my career mode playthrough on F1 2021. I should have known that the circuit that could give Mahavir Ragunathan a points finish on F1 2020 was not the place to hold sensible races, but at least I knew they would be interesting unlike the comparatively dull races that Zanvort produced. 7 of the 22 drivers didn't make it to the end of the first season's Austrian Grand Prix, including both Williams, as Russell crashed into the back of Latifi as the Canadian was pitting. That brought out the safety car and then Latifi crashed into the back of the safety car and retired. After another crash which brought out the safety car again, Sonoda bumped into the back of it and took his wheel off and then my own teammate Robert Schwartzman hit the back of Sonoda's car to also retire from the race. Ironically, the safety car was the most dangerous part of the first season's Grand Prix. It was comparatively calm up at the front as Lewis Hamilton won the race, and he went on to win the second season's race as well as season 7's. That's not to say he didn't get caught out by the pit entry carnage as he certainly did. In fact, pretty much everyone who competed at the top of F1 for several years at some point got screwed over by it. Not even just that, Michael Schumacher only did one race, and even he retired from a pit lane crash. Ayrton Senna took part in two Austrian Grand Prix for my team and he didn't finish either of them. In season 8 he hit the rear of Schwarzman at the now infamous second to last corner. And in season 10 he was leading but then dropped out of the running due to a mechanical failure. The notable exception was Max Verstappen as he competed in all 10 Austrian Grand Prix for Red Bull and he made it to the end of every single one. He was one of the very few drivers who actually demonstrated awareness and foresight. And that wasn't just Red Bull related home luck, as Carlos Sainz proved. So we know more or less what happened in the other races. Lots of people crashed at the second to last corner, occasionally teammates hit one another, my teammates generally got really unlucky as Jensen Button also went out due to a car failure during his one and only appearance. All of that said, there was some genuinely good racing and some honest mistakes from drivers including Louis Delatraz in a Williams. Valtteri Bottas also spanned during a race when he was already at the back of the pack anyway. He showed that even qualifying wasn't always normal as it was a changeable conditions qualifying session in Season 8 and Bottas was the only driver who didn't go out on track once it had dried up. That's the summary of what happened in the 10 Austrian Grand Prix I ran on F1 2021. There were strategy mistakes, drivers who span out, plenty of close quarters battling for track position and a lot, and I mean a lot, of crashes. Season 4's Grand Prix was by far the most exciting as it had all of that in abundance. Max Verstappen survived every single race we had at the Red Bull Ring and this one was no exception, but this was also, coincidentally, the one and only time he didn't score points in Austria. Heading into the fourth season there was a three department wide rule change which hit the aerodynamic, durability and most importantly, the powertrain department. That meant certain engine manufacturers lost buckets of performance with Honda in particular the worst hit as they had only a 77 performance engine, with Ferrari in only a marginally better position with 80 performance. The upshot is the Mercedes and Renault power teams were doing well whilst Red Bull Honda were in the mid pack. All of that explains why the starting grid for the fourth season's Austrian Grand Prix was this. An immense lap from David Coulthard yesterday puts him on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Hamilton, Lando Norris, Iceman, Russell, Sainz, Mazepin and Sergio Perez, Verstappen, Leclerc, Lance Stroll and Schwartzman, Ocon, Sonoda, Nicholas Latifi and Antonio Giovinazzi, Gasly, Mick Schumacher, Lundgaard, and Quan Yu Zhou. David Coulthard took full advantage of the car he had as he took pole position 
and was able to hold on to first place with a decent launch away from the grid. In between me and DC were both Mercedes and McLaren drivers battling amongst each other, albeit not for long as the virtual safety car came out at the start of the second lap. The cause for that stems back to the first lap when Sainz tried to capitalise on a better start than me as he dove for the tight inside line into the first corner, however, he ended up spearing straight into the side of his former teammate Lando Norris, taking off some of his own front wing in the process. He was able to drag his car back to the pits, but of course that meant someone was going to end up piling into the back of him, and on this occasion it was Nicholas Latifi who got caught out. The Renault engines proved their worth as I was able to get past Norris and then Hamilton on the run to turn 3 to move up to 4th place overall, putting my PSL racing team in the net strongest position. Then McLaren took Ricardo out of the top 6 fight to repair what must have been either the most infinitesimal amount of front wing damage or damage that was completely invisible. Once Ricardo left the pits he then lightly tapped the side of a Haas at the same corner and pitted again for another new front wing meaning it must be made of glass. Then the inevitable happened as Stroll retired after a huge accident when he hit the back of Gasly's Alfa Romeo at quite a high closing speed. That rightly brought out the safety car which had its own impact on the race although all of us frontrunners had already pitted before the safety car came out, so it was the status quo for us. Sonoda didn't get a chance to move up the order since his car ground to a halt shortly afterwards and at the same part of the circuit that Stroll ended his running at. Charles Leclerc though, who at this point in the career was driving for Alpine, had stayed out just long enough so that he could change tyres under the safety car and lose as little time as possible. That meant that once the safety car went back into the pits again, I was running in 4th with Bottas still ahead of me in 3rd and Coulthard as the race leader, but Leclerc was now in 2nd place. We then managed one whole lap of racing which was enough for me to pass Bottas, but before I got a chance to attack Leclerc, which I needed to do since he'd wisely opted, for a set of hard compound tyres whilst the rest of us had to pit again as we were all on mediums. Anyway, before I had a chance to overtake him the safety car came out again. This time it was the other Alfa Romeo driver of Guan Yu Zhou who was rear ended but this time the Alfa driver was definitely at fault. He still needed to stop and because the cars were all bunched up and he was on the opposite side of the track to the pit entry he decided to brake in the middle of the straight and let everyone by before entering the pit lane and that's a pretty defeatist move but more to the point extremely dangerous as he was brake checking multiple people and it was Mick Schumacher who wasn't able to react in time and steer out of the way of him. Once we were allowed to go racing again this time it was the front runners who had decided to go berserk. Bottas went to try and pass me into turn 1 but ran out of road and compromised his own run into the first corner. That meant Norris was able to go around the outside and pass him but then behind both of them, Russell took the racing line around turn 1, got a good exit and had the slipstream which meant he caught up to the back of Norris and Bottas and they were side by side and then he pulled up alongside them on the inside line. The problem there is that Hamilton did exactly the same as Russell and went up the inside of him, meaning Norris, Bottas, Russell and Hamilton went four wide into turn three. Norris got away cleanly as he was on the outside so he had the space to turn into and so he took fourth place. Russell though was the victim of a pincer movement by both Mercedes and so he lost his entire front wing. With no front wing, Russell had to come into the pits and that meant, given how bunched up the cars still were after the recent safety car, someone was bound to cross paths with him at the pit entry and this time, it was the Red Bull of Esteban Ocon. That caused a log jam and meant Giovinazzi and the Williams also retired as he had to park up behind Ricardo, and then Sainz hit the Italian driver to crush him in between the Ferrari and the McLaren. Frankly, Sainz was lucky not to get terminal damage from that, but either way, 
three drivers retired from that one chain of events and the safety car came out for the third time. With the track under a full course yellow, I bailed for intermediate tyres before we met the back of the safety car and it bunched us all back up again. At this point in time it had just started raining but the thinking from me, and only me, was to fit the intermediates during the safety car period since you lose as little time relative to the others as possible. Obviously the track was nowhere near wet enough for them to work yet. But the thinking was that the track is only going to get wetter and they would be the tyres to be on before the chequered flag came out. Even with my stop I was still in the points places but to be fair though there's now only 15 runners left. However, because it's such a short lap, it was only about 3 minutes after I stopped that we were back racing again. Daniel Ricciardo on the slicks got by me and then he immediately passed Verstappen as well taking advantage of the one and only year in this career that Verstappen had a bad car. I of course had the fastest car by some margin but I was still dropping back. That is until the start of the very next lap when the pendulum swung in my favour, as I was simply able to drive away from Verstappen at the exit of turn 3. On the next lap I was the fastest guy out there and I got by Ricardo and Perez even though they were running side by side so Ricardo certainly didn't lack bravery in the ever worsening conditions. Schwartzman in an Alpha Tauri, Mazepin in an Alpine and Valtteri Bottas were all easy pickings. And then Leclerc and Hamilton were the first, other than me, to pit for enters. Norris, very Russian Grand Prix-esque, decided to stay out and try and survive the final three laps on the dry tyres and further up the road Coulthard had also decided not to stop. Norris was no trouble to pass for second place and then up ahead of me was only my teammate David Coulthard. At the start of the lap he was 9 seconds ahead of me and by the end I was in first place and he was facing the wrong way. Coulthard wasn't the only driver to spin just before the pits as soon afterwards he was joined by the Alpine of Mazepin. That said, they were the only two to lose it before they pitted and that meant David Coulthard who had led every single lap up until then, chucked away the shot of even just a place on the podium. With two laps to go, Carlos Sainz was the only one to stick with the dry tyres. He managed to hold on to the runner up spot for over half a lap, but Leclerc and Hamilton overtook him with a lap and a few corners of the race still to go. Then his Ferrari teammate Sergio Perez, Robert Schwartzman and Valtteri Bottas cleared him on the final lap but even so, Sainz was still on course to finish the Grand Prix in 7th place. The weird thing is though is that he plainly didn't, yet apparently he did. Sainz spun at the same part of the circuit that DC and Mazepin did earlier in the race, but crucially he did it just after I finished the race. That meant his spin and the fact we see him get overtaken by Norris, Joe, Coulthard and Lungard, which would put him in 11th place, officially speaking didn't happen and so he was still classified by the game as finishing in 7th place. And there you have it, one virtual safety car, three actual safety cars, some huge crashes, an unlikely podium my only win at the circuit, heartbreak for David Coulthard and, of course given that this is a Co-Masters F1 game, an issue that messed with what some of the results really should have been. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did be sure to leave a like, comment down below and I'll see you guys in whatever video I put out next.